Hello and welcome to a first look at Access. This is the database program in the Microsoft suite of programs and the version I'm using here is 2003. If you are using 2007 or 2010 versions of Access then it will be producing another tutorial that's more relevant in terms of the interface but many of the things in this video are applicable to the later versions anyway so hopefully you'll find something useful in here to take away. Okay, so let's get started. Um, when you first open Access, you will have this Getting Started sidebar. And if for any reason you don't see that, and I'll just close it down, to start or create a database, you simply click on the New button on the left side of the standard toolbar there. When you click on that, you get a new sidebar. And to start, simply click on Blank Database and give your database a name. I'm going to call mine ABC Limited. And once you've done that, just press the Enter key. And that's it, really. You've now set the database file up, and you're ready to start creating tables and entering information and all the rest of the lovely things that go with Access. So the first thing I need to do here is create my table. And so I'm going to click on New, choose Table Design, and click OK. And that will open the Table Design window. I'll go into this in much more detail in later videos, so just for this one, I will... Uh, get started and enter the information. So we have field name, data type, and I won't use the description field, but that is an option for you to use if you want to describe the different fields within your records. So field name number one is going to be product ID. Just tab across there. Data type I'm going to set as auto number. And all that means is that Access will automatically apply a unique number to each record in my database. Second field I'm going to use uh, or call it product name and I'll leave that as text so I'll just tab through the next row then I'm going to use a uh, price for the name of my third field and this time I'll set the data type as currency and just click down to the fourth row there I'll type in there supplier tab across and the data type for supply will remain as text. Next field will be a telephone number for the supplier. So I'll just type in a telephone for the field name, tab across and even though a telephone number is a number I'm not going to set it as a data type number because I'll never do a calculation on a phone number so it doesn't really matter. Leave it as text and we're going to have stock check date as my next field name and that will be a date. So I'm going to choose the date, time, data type there. And finally, stock check quantity. If I can type it right. I'm just typing QTY for quantity, keep it nice and simple. And this will be a number because I might want to calculate with that later on, maybe work out my total stock levels and so on. Right, before I go on into the data, I'm going to do a couple of things here. Product ID, I want to tell Access that this is the thing that will uniquely identify each record in my table. So I just click anywhere in the row there, the field name, and click on the key button, the primary key button, as you see. Puts a little key marker into the row to indicate that that is the thing that uniquely identifies this record. And finally for this table, I need to save it and give it a name. So I'm going to click on the Save button, and we'll call it products and supplies and just press enter okay so there's a table created I now need to enter my record so I'm going to go back to the toolbar and the left hand side the button there is label the view just click on that basically it's a switch between design view and data entry view in case you ever wondered and in data entry view I am ready to start entering my information so for record number one we're going to have sweets and the price will be 75p so type in there 0.75 supplier is a business called sweet sorrows which I don't think exists telephone number I don't think that exists either stock check date and stock check quantity simple as that so there's my first record as soon as it gets to the end just press the enter key and Access moves me down to the next row ready to start a new record. I'll tab across and hopefully you notice as on the previous record that 
as soon as I start typing my name, Access automatically puts the record number in for me. So I'm going to work through this next record. Put some random stuff in. This isn't a real world database, as you may have guessed. OK, and again, second record gets the end, press enter. Now you can just tab through if you want to as you enter information. And tab will move you to the right, shift and tab will actually move you to the left if you want to do that. Or you can simply take your mouse and click in the appropriate cell that you want to type in. Very similar operation to a spreadsheet. I'll just type one more record just to show you how simple it is to do once you set the table up. And dates, whatever, 4th of May, quantity, 70 press enter. So I've got three records there entered in my database. I'm going to enter a few more, uh, so I'm going to pause this briefly. I'll come back and you will see a more populated table. Okay, so here we have the table with a few more records added in. Um, got eight so far. A couple of things on the, the table layout. Uh, you'll notice that the last entry has actually been cut off because, again, the column isn't wide enough. Just as you can in Excel, you can adjust the width of the column simply by clicking and dragging like so. So you put your mouse pointer between the two columns and you get the double way, two way arrow. Just click and drag. And I can do the similar thing with those last two columns. And in this case, I can just double click again on the edge to expand the column. Now that I've changed the layout there, I just need to save that. So click on save and I can close that table. Now the next thing I want to do is create a form to make the presentation of my data a bit more user friendly because although you can continue to enter using the table it's a little bit more convenient to have something like a form where you're viewing one record at a time rather than all the records in your database. So to create a form that's going to go to the form object there in that list of choices. So we'll click on new let's bring that dialog into view there click on form wizard in this case click on the drop down choose my only table products and suppliers click OK and here I want to move all the field names in other words all the fields in my record across to display on the form so I'm going to click on this double chevron thing here and that moves all the items across and at this point I don't need to make any more changes here I can simply click on the finish button there we are and if I show you down at the bottom here, it says record and it says number one of eight. And I can simply click through these one by one, backwards and forwards, using these little control buttons here. I can also jump to the beginning of the table by clicking this button here on the left. That takes me to record number one. And I can jump to the end of the table of records by just clicking this button here on the right hand side. It takes me to record number eight. And now if I want to add a new record, there's a couple of things I can do from here. I can go to the last record and click on the next button. Or let's say I'm somewhere else in the database or table and I click on this button here, the little asterisk next to it, it'll automatically jump to a blank record for me to create a new entry. So obviously I don't need to enter product ID. So I'm going to click into product name and I'm going to enter using the form. And price my cola cubes were 85p. Well, they're probably cheaper than that when I bought them when I was younger, but in fact, they probably don't even exist anymore. Never mind. Um, I can't remember the name of the supplier, but that will do. Telephone number. Stock check dates. Let's say that was the 5th of May. And let's say we had uh, 25 of those in stock press the enter key. Now when I press the enter at the end of the record it automatically jumps to a new blank one ready for me to enter another record. If at this point you don't want to do that you don't have to. Just click on the back button and it'll return you to the record view. If you want to edit a record, let's say I got my stock check number wrong, I can just change that 25 to say 30. So I can press the enter key here to refresh the record or I can go to the records drop down menu there and click on refresh. There is a keyboard shortcut as well, you can press F9 to refresh a record as you're entering it. And that's it really, so I can close that form down now. And just to prove that 
the table will have updated if I go back to the tables there open that table you'll see my new record there on the table that I've entered using the form so obviously those two items are linked the key to understanding an access database is simply to keep in mind that the table is the foundation everything else whether it be a form or a printable report is built on that table um, and that's where all your data is actually stored the forms and other things in access are simply different ways of displaying information that is stored in your table or tables more likely now the next thing I'd like to do with this database is extract some useful information so I'm going to go to queries now queries are just a way of questioning your database or pulling out information that is useful if you have a large database it's sometimes helpful to see it, maybe a, a subset of that data so it's more manageable and this is what queries will do really they'll take data out based on questions that you ask so this query here I'm going to create by clicking new leave it as design view click OK first thing you need to do here when this grid pops up is add a table so that one's already highlighted because it's the only one I've got as you know so let's click add close that show table window and we're all ready to go now then I want to have all my fields displayed again on a couple of ways you can do that I could click and drag each one one by one that's a bit tedious a smarter way is simply to double click on that asterisk at the top there and although it looks like it's only entered one thing if I show you the results by clicking this red exclamation mark says run in the tooltip it shows the result of that query now at the moment it's showing all the records all nine records I don't want that to uh, to be the case now what I'm going to do here is select that sweet sorrow supplier name I'm going to right click and copy that go back to the design view of my query and I'm going to drag down the supplier name into the second column there okay and in criteria I shall right click and choose paste and that paste the sweet sorrow's name in press the enter key and now if I go back and rerun that query you will see all I can all I get now is the sweet sorrows products which is what I want and that's it really. that's a nice simple select query I'm going to save that and I'm just going to call it sweet sorrows products fairly obviously press enter close that down and now I'm going to create a new form based on that query so go back to forms click new again use a form wizard this time if I click the drop down you'll see I've not only got my table but also the query there as well so select that click OK I'm going to put all the items across first of all but then I'm going to select product ID and move that back and I won't bother with the stock check items either so all I have is the product name the price the supplier and the phone number and click on finish again and there's my smaller form which just shows the supplier information for sweet sorrows so obviously they're all going to be the same supplier name but the products are different as I click through now you can actually have both forms open at once so I can click on bring the both into view there so you can have as many forms open at the same time as you want if that helps so you can have different views of the same data but right now I'm finished with that so I'm going to close those down and finally for this overview I'm just going to create a report so I'm going to click on the report item in the object list again there click on new use the report wizard this time click on the drop down and I will base it on my main table click OK again here I'll move all the items across first of all so all these items will appear on the report but I'm going to take the product ID field and move that back because I don't want that click on next and here I'm going to select a grouping level by clicking on supplier and clicking on the little arrow button there and what that does basically it will list all my products under the appropriate supplier name so it's a bit more organized click on next again here I'm going to sort by product name under each supplier and in the summary options I'm going to select sum for stock check so it adds up all the items I have in stock for those suppliers and click OK and 
I'll go through the rest of the wizard, but the next two items are simply design features. The first one is choose your layout, which I will leave a step there, and the last one is just to choose a style. You have different styles there, but I'll leave it as the corporate one. Click next, and I can change the name here, so maybe just add the word report on. You don't need to, but I will to make it more uh, identifiable, perhaps. And then click finish. And there we have the report. Now, again, this is based on the original table of data, so the report itself is simply a way of displaying that information. And the report doesn't actually contain any data itself, it's simply a, a presentation of your data. And as I scroll down there you can see we have the summary option so you can see there cheesy treats 100, fizzy things 30 plus 70 is 100 and right down at the bottom we have the grand total so we know how many items we have in stock at the moment or at the last stock check anyway. So there we are so I can close that down now that's saved and so we've created a report for printing We've created forms for viewing on screen. We've created a query which extracts information from a table. And obviously, the most important thing, we've created the table of data, which is the foundation for your database and is where all your information is actually stored. So that concludes this overview of Microsoft Access 2003. I hope you found that useful and there were some things in there that you could apply to the work you're doing. Over the coming weeks I'm going to be uploading a series of access tutorials that will go into much more detail on tables, forms, reports and queries and uh, maybe a few other things besides so you can build very useful databases. So thank you again for watching, subscribe if you'd like to keep up with my future videos and I'll see you next time.